Welcome to Secrets from the Saddle podcast. I'm Sylvie Daou, your host, fellow cyclist, bike club founder, cycling coach, bike race junkie, just truly super passionate about cycling. My journey with cycling started 20 years ago when I opened a spin studio, started a women's race team, and founded a women's only cycling club called Cycle Fit Chicks. I'm super thrilled to reveal all aspects that make the world of cycling operate. I'm so excited to be able to bring you interesting people from around the world, pro cyclists, recreational cyclists, coaches, event organizers, bike shop owners, everything and everyone you need to know or ever wondered about when it comes to cycling. I know you'll enjoy this episode. everyone, welcome to another episode of Secrets from the Saddle All Things Cycling Podcast with your host Sylvie Dehu and we have, I have been working on getting this woman onto our podcast for a while because she has started a really cool woman's mountain biking group that is like spreading a like wildfire across the United States. It's Girls Gone Riding. And we're going to be talking to Wendy Engelberg from LA. She started this program and I am super excited about talking to her about it and finding out how she put it all together. Because I have a women's cycling club and I really love the concept of what she's done and I've seen it happening more and more in the mountain biking scene not the road cycling so I am really interested in diving into how she got it all started so without ado let's introduce Wendy to the podcast I hope you really enjoy this episode and if you're a female mountain biker in the United States go look her up. So let's get to it. All right, everybody, welcome back. We have Wendy here from LA who has, I'm so excited, like I said, that she's here. She has her women's mountain bike group called Girls Gone Riding. She has eight chapters across the United States, and we're going to really dive into how she got this put it started together and how it started growing across the United States. Welcome Wendy to the Thank podcast. You. Thanks. Glad to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. So I always ask the first question, how did you get into cycling? Yeah. And so how did it led you to what you're doing today? Yeah. Uh boy, it's been quite the journey. Um back in like around oh gosh, I don't know. Um long time ago. Um, <laughs> I, I was going through, um, a really terrible divorce and I was separated. Mountain biking was something I always wanted to do, but, um, uh, I couldn't do to the situation I, I was in. So literally the day I got separated, I went out that same day and to my local bike shop and bought a hardtail for $450, which I thought was insane. Little... <laughs> Right. Yeah. Little, little <laughs> did I know I, I couldn't even, you know, get barely a dropper seat post now for that. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I hadn't ridden a bike at all, um, like ever since I've been like a, a child, but it was something I always wanted. So I bought the bike and then the f I, I looked around to um on the internet for a place to go ride and an event or a meetup and so i found um the uh corva fat tire festival in malibu at malibu creek state park and so that was my very first ride ever on this big event and um i showed up and there was a few hundred people there and um, the, the first part of the experience was horrible because I didn't know how to use a bike rack. And so I couldn't, I ended up locking my bike on the back of my, my trunk. I couldn't figure out how to get it undone. So I had to wait till the clinic was oh. undone or done that I was supposed to go in. I was so embarrassed. And I took, I asked the instructor if he would come get the bike off my rack for me and show me what I did wrong. And so um, that was my first uh, introduction into mountain biking. And during that event, there is a booth called Dirt Chicks. And mm -hmm. there, 
yeah, there were these two girls, the only girls there in like, out of all these people, they, <laughs> yeah, Karen and Kim, um, little did I know we'd all become lifelong friends. And um, I asked them, you know, hey, where's all the women? And, and not that they're I like, don't, you're looking yeah, at it. <laughs> exactly. So, so that's kind of what got me started. And then um, I just started writing. I, I found some other friends. I was writing with Dirt Chicks for a bit, ran into some other people. And then um, at one point, uh, I was working in uh, kind of a, a high stress job in an automotive, in the automotive industry with a lot of men. So I needed a lot of emergency happy hours. So, <laughs> yeah. So I called uh, Karen and Kim, actually. And for an emergency happy hour. And so we went to this place called the Elephant Bar and had a ton of martinis. And we were talking about all the other women we were running into out on the trails that were by themselves all mm -hmm. the time. And we'd mm -hmm. stop and we talked to them. And it was always the same answer, Sylvie. It was like, well, my husband, my boyfriend, they always drop me. They don't wait for me. All they want to mm -hmm. do is mansplain and, and get, coach me. Um, it's just when, you know, they take me, they, you know, I went out riding with them once or twice and they took me on a cliff where it was a 200 foot drop, just horror stories. So uh, we decided, well, you know what, we up between the three of us, we all know enough women. Why don't we just kind of put the word out, get everybody together, like at a meetup. And mm. so all these women can have other women to ride with their own schedule, their own, the same levels. And let's just see what happens. And that was December of 2011, I think 11. And then February, um, 2012, um, after no advertising, but just doing kind of like a cheesy poster at a couple of bike shops and word of mouth at Malibu Creek State Park, we had 85 women show up. Yeah. Whoa. And so I, I, yeah, I couldn't believe it. And I was like, wow. okay, I think 2011, we that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. So I said, okay, I think we got something here. <laughs> we had no idea what we were doing. And um, <laughs> word got out so quickly, live. Um, at the time it was, um, uh, giant. Live, live giant before yeah. they branded out themselves. Uh, but they're local and they're, they're like 15 minutes from me, me, um, live in uh, giant. So they reached out and we said, Hey, they said, Hey, we heard about this women's event that you all put on. We want in, how can we get involved? I'm like, what? You want to get involved with our, our women in the community? That's fantastic. And then Cali Protectives joined on board. And then um, Corba, who I sit on the board, they're a, we're an IMBA affiliate. And mm -hmm. um, Corba uh, basically um, manages uh, or helps keep all the trails open. It, it does a lot of political things and, and helps, uh, does trail work, all sorts of stuff. And so they got involved and we did another event that same year in October and we had 125 women show up. Wow. So, yeah. So it just kept kind of progressing and we ended up doing a ride a quarter and that got just too big. There was a hundred women showing up every time. <laughs> And, and we had like a couple of volunteers. And so it was like organized chaos kind of, right? And, but lots of fun. I'm like, okay, what do we do? And so we all got together, of course, over drinks and margaritas and, and at uh, <laughs> I need BJ's. to go down and talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like 20 of us that got together. We, uh, in the middle of this cult place called BJ's in the Valley in Woodland Hills, we got this big long table and ordered pictures and said, okay, what are we going to do with this? <laughs> hey, gravel riders, are you new to the sport and had a fantastic summer exploring? And now you've put together a kick-ass 2023 gravel event schedule, but you're not quite sure where to start with regards to training, staying, and keeping fit over the winter? Well, I can totally relate. And if that's the case, this might be the program for you. It's my 20-week winter online road cycling skills program. Or you can basically jump in whenever you are ready until the end of January. It's geared towards people just like you who are looking for ways to properly train over the winter. 
It includes skills development, intervals, endurance-based building, everything you need. Workouts are scheduled and planned, which takes all the guesswork out of the how and what to train. It's a real no-brainer and makes scheduling so simple. How it works, you sign up for a monthly subscription for only $49 Canadian. What you get in this low rate of only $49 is the most comprehensive winter coaching program on the market. You get access to an online coach who is a level three Canadian national performance cycling coach. That's me. Uh, weekly cycling skill sessions including that include pedal stroke efficiency, hill climbing. We have weekend swift endurance base building group rides. Included are also Tuesday night swift sprint and speed for intervals. This program is goal driven. We have clients who are looking to work on goals like keeping fit, getting faster, and riding 100k by April. Don't wait another moment to get involved and in subscribing into this program. It It will be the best $49 a month you'll ever spend on training. And if you don't believe me, all you have to do is go and search for a cycling coach. You've ever that, and you'll find that $49 is a super affordable rate. We also have a supportive Facebook group with chat rooms for all our training rides, access to an actual actual coach, plus you'll gain the knowledge you need to improve your cycling form, skills, and technique. Go to cyclingskillspro.com for more information and to register. Take advantage of all these benefits this program has offered for an amazing deal of only $49 a month. Don't wait another week to get on track to training smarter, not harder this winter. We need a name. Okay. So that was the first part. So we decided, and, and let me tell you, the acronyms were just, wow, it was it was potty mouth night that night coming up with names and my, <laughs> yeah. And so my, my close friend who's unfortunately no longer um, with us, Mary Beth came up with a name girls gone riding with G R uh, girls with a Z and that just stuck G G R. It was really simple and, and easy to remember. So we came up with a name and uh, we decided to start doing monthly rides and that helped um, narrow the, um, uh, the the people down, and we started getting more volunteers. And and then mm-hmm. one year, um, I was at Interbike, which is a big, sh- which yeah. was a big show in in Vegas. And I had one of the girls in the Inland Empire come up to me and said, "Hey, I I like what you're doing. We have a lot of girls in the Inland Empire. Have you ever thought about starting a chapter?" I'm like, "Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what you, what do you have in mind?" And, uh, well, the same thing you're doing, but over here in the Inland Empire, where I said, sounds good to me, let's, let's talk. And that um, spanned out, that, that happened. And then just over the years, we grew to, um, let's see, San Diego. We're all in Southern California, Arizona. Uh, San Diego, Big Bear, um, Orange County, Mojave, Kern. Um, and then our, our last chapter, um, is uh, Central California, which is near um, uh, Fresno. So oh, all these years, um, yeah, we we just kept growing, and we we would do some big events um, in the fall. Now we just do um, an annual Women's Weekend in Big Bear, which is a three day weekend, which is super That's fun. That's the one that yeah, that happened just happened not too like. A month yeah july season? like yeah. july yeah oh july. okay yeah so um that's usually every july or august and it's a three-day uh weekend ladies only for um uh and we cover uh the bike parks we go to snow summit and we we offer guided downhill runs we offer guided um cross country um, enduro runs and we have a group dinner we do um, awards and we have some raffles so we have um, uh, suppliers that uh, donate 
uh, to the event. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so um, e each chapter um, has, they have a monthly uh, group ride and they also have a greeny one ride, which is separate, which is for kind of newbies. Um, and uh, it's very uniformed. All the volunteers are trained because um, our mission is to get more women mountain biking, but yet yeah. ensure that they have a great experience every time. Right. And how do you have a great experience out in the mountains with a group of women? Well, you have trained volunteers. Right. And that's how um, we ensure a great experience. And there are also mm -hmm. no drop rides. So right. nobody gets left behind. We do head counts. It's very social, very relaxed. It's a lot of fun. So how are your coaches trained? So they're not coaches. See, or we, you're we guide. Or your, your yeah. guides. Yeah. So we have volunteers that are guides. We do have a couple of coaches in the, <clears throat> excuse me, club um, that are actually pro riders and professional mm -hmm. uh, coaches that have insurance and they do separate um, clinics. Okay. Uh, group rides are, is not, it's a group ride. It's not something where you want to do any kind of coaching. So we just guide. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as the um, coaching and training of the volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing that pretty much myself. We have a SOP. Um, so everybody can go through that. I have a PowerPoint. We, we go out, it's a, it's uh, about a half day out on the trail and before that, it's about an hour Zoom. So they get some history on the club. They get mm -hmm. history on women's products, um, on women's mountain biking. And then I bring them out for about a half a day on the trail. And we learn how to do meet and greets. Because when you're in a group ride, you want to first take like 30 seconds for each person and find mm -hmm. out how long, you know, what their name is, how long yeah, they've yeah. been riding. Yeah. And, and um, if they've ever ridden in that area, because if you have someone that's only been riding for six months and they're in a blue ride, well, we want to respectfully take that rider and put them in a more appropriate ride to ensure they're going to have a great experience. Yeah. And so that's part of vetting them out in the meet and greet. Right. That's one of the things that we do. Um, and then I also train them on just basic uh, first aid, assessing the situation, um, and then we do, um, we have everybody practice floating, sweeping and leading. And then I create really uh, silly, obnoxious scenarios out on the trail for them to, uh, deal with. And so that's my oh. favorite part. <laughs> really? I, I'll cut people off. I'll go the wrong way. Um, all sorts of fun, uh, fun things. And so this way. Um, I can guide the volunteers how to handle these situations because they happen all the time. And, you know, we want to keep, it is mountain biking, so there is an element of danger. So we want to keep everybody safe and, of course, ensure everybody has a great experience. Wow. Okay. So what's SOP? An SOP is a standard operating procedure. Okay. So that's just, it's a business term. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Like, I should know that. Yeah, no, that's all right. <laughs> so you put that, you put that together and basically you put your leaders through it. The, yeah. Like your volunteer, um, yeah, group ride leaders. Yeah. Well, we have, we have, it's like a day and a half program for training. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, well, it's like an hour of, um, hour or so zoom meeting and then about half, half a day to three quarters of a day out on the trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Um, cause much like my women's cycling club, it's the same deal, same story with, you know, either they've been riding by themselves or their partner you know, they're always waiting for them. They're too fast. They're, you know, it's an uncomfortable experience. And then they find us and, and, uh, and it's so cool to have everybody. But like I was mentioning, Wendy, my, I have a club and I was really, really interested in how the chapter works. So you just have one chapter ride a month. You don't do anything more like oh we do lots of stuff in between but what so what we do um a chapter like creating a chapter it requires a director and yeah. a leader and a leadership team yeah so you can't do it by yourself 
Okay. Right. And all that's required is that you do one um, multi-level club ride a month and you do one oh. green. Yeah. And then you do one greenie, one ride a month. So that's two rides. Mm -hmm. And then everything in between. Um, so those are the two official rides that we plan on and we do events and a calendar and everything in between. You can do anything you want. You're Everybody in the organization is encouraged to post their pickup rides. So if somebody oh, says, hey, okay. I'm off on Wednesday or I have a babysitter for four hours, who can go ride Wednesday? And so they'll post a pickup ride. We have girls um, that do bike packing all the time. And so they'll post, hey, let's, uh, we're doing a bike packing trip uh, in mid, uh, mid November, who wants to go? So there's, there's always stuff going on. Um, but officially okay. we'll have two ride, two rides a month. Right. Okay. Oh, that road makes trip. sense. Yeah. Yeah. We do yeah. road trips, um, in the summer, lots of road trips. So being part of the chapter, is it free? Oh yeah. Or... Um, it's, it's always free in to participate um, in any GGR event. Um, mm -hmm. It's a free membership. Now the the um, venues will charge a fee. Um, so if you go to like any bike park, that's completely separate. Oh, it's got okay. nothing to do with us. So you still have to pay the fee at that bike park. But mm -hmm. GGR, um, it it's always going to be free. It's meant to, it's set up so not to make money. And so Anybody can get involved in the women's community at any time, at no matter what their financial situation is. So is there fees for any other things that are? Nope. Everything's free. There's never a charge, ever. Even the the weekend, the three-day weekend? Yeah, no, we don't charge anything. Now, they again, they do have to pay for the venues. They have to pay for, mm -hmm. like, their hotels. But to participate... Um, as a member, they never have to, there's, there's no fee. It's always free. And it's, it's a hundred percent run by volunteer. We're all volunteers. So we all do right. this in our spare time and we, we live off of donations basically. So like the, the expenses really aren't that much. It's uh, like website um, maintenance uh, when I, when I have to travel here and there. So it's really not that much. And we get enough donations to cover that every year. So how do you deal with insurance, Wendy? Well, yeah, so I sit on the CORBA board, okay? So as an officer, I am, personally, I'm insured, okay? Mm -hmm. um, events, we, uh, any major event, like the Big Bear event, we have, each each venue has uh, their own waivers and their own in insurance, and, and each person is really responsible for themselves, um, right. If it's a three-day okay. event, like local event, then we get an event insurance. Um, but normal um, events during um, during the month, we have them sign waivers. Um, and uh, when they sign up for the ride, they 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 read the waiver, and, and that's all we can do. Is if somebody wants to see you, they're going to see you. But knock on wood, um, we've never ever had any issues. Um, mountain bikers are used to. <laughs> Getting, yeah. getting injured and it's just part, you know, it's part of the sport. Yeah. I was injured this summer. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So, so tell me more about, um, yeah, more about the organization. So it, are you looking to grow it or is it just growing organically? Like people coming to you and saying, we'd like to do what you're doing um how can you help us kind of thing yeah it's been grow it's all been organic because everybody mm -hmm. is volunteers um mm -hmm. and um i have a full time corporate job where i travel a ton so yeah. i don't have much time to devote unfortunately um and my job's gotten increasingly more demanding over the last few years. So my time is really limited. Uh, I would love to grow and have um, chapters in every single state, uh, but I'd have to devote uh, devote my full time uh, to, to doing that. Um, but I have like, we have had chapters come to us like Inland Empire and Central that wanted to um, information. Hey, we're interested. We, we have a bunch of girls, but we have no structure and we need routine and structure. Mm -hmm. You know, what do we, what do we do? And it's easy. It's so easy to start a chapter. You just have to have a strong leadership team. Yeah. And that's, and so let's talk about your leadership team. Yeah. So you must have like 
a core group of you that are that yeah we have about 62 total volunteers in the organization yeah wow and yeah that's big well there's eight chapters so right. okay okay um, so it's yeah. spread across the chapters yeah correct and e yeah each chapter has their own leadership uh group and mm -hmm. volunteers um like i run the um uh even though I'm the director and co-founder, um, I still have a director for each chapter because I I can't manage 4,200 mm -hmm. women, nor do I want. Nor do I want 4,200 women. Yeah, yeah, 4,200 women we have. It's a lot, so I, I don't have Holy. time to do that. So yeah, um, so each each chapter has a director and a leadership team, and that's really how it gets done. And then if they, if they need direction or if they need to escalate anything, then they'll, then they'll come to me, but the, I pretty much leave everybody alone. They know what, they know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. So, and my leadership team locally in Los Angeles, I've known all these, these they've been my friends for many, many, many years. Yeah. So um, we all know each other really well. There's not much I have to say. It's, it kind of runs itself, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, you know, we're always looking for more volunteers too. life happens. Everybody gets busy, um, yeah. between family and, and work. We lose volunteers all the time because they're just too busy and they can't make that commitment. So we're yeah. always looking for more volunteers. Wow. So do you guys have a Jersey, a kit that oh, everybody yeah. can buy? And uh, yeah, like, yeah, swag? we have the store goes up. We have a new store coming out um, like any day now, but usually we'll put the store up a couple of times a year. And so we have we have a full line. Mm -hmm. We have jackets, hoodies. Um, we have a full kit. We have a downhill uh, downhill kit, enduro kit, um, uh, all, all sorts of uh, a big line socks. Yeah. So lots of purple, what? lots of, it's purple and teal are, are, are colors. Is that for this year or usually, or No, that's always, yeah, purple and teal. Yeah, it's our colors. Oh, that's awesome. Now, yeah. so, so what else can I ask you? Cause that's pretty interesting. Cause like I was mentioning, I have my women's cycle club, but we charge um, a yearly fee and we have amazing volunteers and, but we put out, well, I guess we put out like four rides plus a skills night every week. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Well, it's, well, it's, I guess it's kind of like you, but we do have leveled rides every Saturday and, um, uh, have a group ride coordinator who helps with that. And that's five level rides, like beginner all the way up to like long distance. Uh -huh. um, more advanced. And, uh, so yeah, so it's a lot. I don't do all that anymore. I'm more of the overall organizing, but I've always been really fascinated because people are like, God, I wish we had a club like yours where we are. And I'm just like, Oh my God, how could I possibly duplicate what I've been it's doing? It's very different too in mountain biking. Yeah. You know, you, first you got to know, the trails really well because a lot of trails mm. don't even have signs okay yeah so it's easy to get lost um you have to be self-sufficient mm -hmm. um out there um it, it's just it's a very different um mindset and you're you're in the middle of nowhere a lot of times you know so you can't stop and get water at a store like you can on yeah. a on a bike on a road bike it's just very different but anybody listening in canada montreal side or anywhere else if you want to start a club there it's really easy um and uh all you need is to be able to commit a couple times a month and have a great leadership team and it's just really easy it's a lot of fun and you know just seeing your community grow and the lifelong friendships that's been the coolest thing mm -hmm. as yeah. women have just become lifelong mm -hmm. friends um, through the organization. I mean, that's how I've met, you know, many of my friends. It's, it's how, like, uh, like w when you're in between jobs and life is terrible and they, they, <laughs> they let you stay in your, their home. I mean, that's the type of community we have, you know? Yeah. And so it's, and they're always planning stuff. We're always, um, doing things in the community there's always stuff going on tons of road trips um 
there's just uh, oh, birthday parties. We do socials too. Um, so it, it's just fun to be involved in, um, in this really strong women's community. And then the, and, and everybody's, you know, all women who identify as women are welcome. And um, we just care that you have a great time on the bike. That's all we care about. I know. I love that. Because I've seen actually groups start in Toronto, not for mountain yeah. biking, but for road. Yeah. And, and they're just, they do like charity events. And I'm yeah. like, what is missing in my club? Yeah. You know, because I just, I find that it's, <laughs> if anybody's listening to this, <laughs> By this, it's kind of because it's a nonprofit and we charge and, um, you know, you have to have all these policies in oh, place yeah, and yeah, yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my God, it's just to be fun, right? Let's just ride our bikes. Like, yeah. We need to have all this, um, all this, uh, like all these rules in place. I'm well, like, we're not, we're not a 501 C. So, um, Corba is our fiscal sponsor. So the, what the is M Corba? So concern off-road, um, uh, sorry, it's a C O R B A <laughs> concern <laughs> off-road, um, bicycling, bicycling association. I had to oh, think. Okay. For a so, um, it, it's, so Corba is our fiscal sponsor and they are the, uh, 501 C. And so, uh, we meet once a month. I sit on the board. I've been on the board for, I don't know, 10 years. And um, we do everything from trail work to Steve, our president, uh, meets with um, uh, officials to talk about land management and mm -hmm. opening trails, all, all sorts of things. And so um, it's real helpful to have um, Corba pretty much um, head up uh, GGR for things like grants. Um, mm -hmm. This is our second year we received an REI community grant, which was so incredible to receive a grant from them. Um, and so, uh, so that goes to Corba, and then Corba distributes uh, the money um, and approves all the programs for the grant. Right. Wow. Yeah. That is really cool. Yeah. Hmm. Cause I was just thinking like, how could I change the concept of my club? But I don't think it'll, it's like you said, it's different between road and mountain biking. There's yeah. A there's, of... so, there's a lot more women that, that road bike. And sometimes there's sometimes women that cross over and um, uh, that cross over to mountain biking. We don't have a whole lot in our club. Most of them are just mm -hmm. mountain bikers. Um, yeah. But there's just so much more av available still um, for um, women in road biking than there is mountain biking. But it's improving a lot. You know, we have our club's yeah. huge. And um, there's another huge club called uh, Black Girls um, Black Girls Ride, I think it's called. And oh, I think I see them. Yeah, they're huge. And they, they're mostly road, but they do mountain biking too. So they have big groups that also mountain bike. They're all over the place. And there's Girls Rock in... Um, Santa Cruz, and they do just once a month, and they have um, a, a, a fantastic turnout. They do a great job. In Southern California, it's 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 a challenge because nobody wants to drive anywhere, and because <laughs> every, it's true, everybody, you know, it's it's the traffic is is and commute uh -oh. is horrible in Los Angeles. So um, it's they they got to really want to ride. Um, to go to the group rides and it depends on where they are. And so it's a little bit right. more challenging because we're so spread out. You know, right. Southern California and Arizona, it's just, it's just incredibly spit large and spread out. But, um, right. but the community in general for women's mountain biking is just growing so much. So what was that other than the name of the, it was Black Girls Ride and the other uh, girls you? rock in there in San, yeah in Santa Cruz yeah they do a real good job look in Santa Cruz yeah and their road those no girls. they're mountain bike the Santa Cruz oh. is all mountain yeah they're all mountain bikers mm. yeah <clears throat> and I believe that they are a five hundred one c but I'm not a hundred percent positive was that is that a non for profit 
Yeah. Like a charity. In it. Yeah, yeah. 501. Yeah. Nonprofit. Huh. Well, that's super cool, Wendy. I really appreciate you. So I hope with our, all of our listeners here, because I have a, the United States is my largest audience, that oh, there's wow. someone in there who's been looking for a woman's mountain bike group. And I think she just listed off a couple. You got girl, you've got girls, well, you got girls gone riding, which is yours. Yep. And there's yep. eight chapters. So you, if you're, you're sort of West of in the United States, this might be a place for you Absolutely. or reach out to Wendy and start yep. your own. Cause that's usually the best way to do it. Absolutely. And like, if you're, if you're not in any of those areas and you just want some insight on, Hey, I'm thinking about getting a new bike. Can you give me some direction? I'm always available. Um, you can email me at uh, Wendy at girls with a Z gone com and just say, Hey, I need some direction. Um, you can also join the LA uh, chapter or any of the other eight chapters just to hang out on the page and see what's going on in the uh, women's mountain biking uh, communities and, and ask questions. And the cool thing is too, if, if you, if like you're in the Southern California area, we all go to all these different chapters and we get to know and ride all these different oh. places because the guided rides. So mm -hmm. you have eight different places to go to for, um, for different rides. So what about gravel? Yeah, gravel, well. uh, getting it. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, I don't really <laughs> see the point of gravel, really, but that's just me. The, the, once in a great while, we get a gravel bike that shows up, but, you know, we do gravel. Um, they tend to, at least in Southern California, stick to like just the long fire roads. And we do, oh, okay. dep yeah, it depends on which level ride, but, you know, we do a lot of single track, but there's, in Southern California, there's a lot of loose rock um, okay. and a lot of it's very technical and it's just painful if you don't have suspension on your bike yeah. and, and drop bars. <laughs> I mean, I can't even imagine. Um, so imagine ima your old hardtail. Imagine that. No. Yeah, no, no. So, <laughs> yeah. So mostly, I mean, uh, gravel bikes are welcome. E-bikes are welcome. Um, all the, you know, rigid is welcome. I mean, it's, it's your pain. So <laughs> <laughs> it's your back. basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But they're all welcome. We just don't see many of them on our rides. No, but I was just wondering, like, cause like there's all the gravel events that are showing up now sure. and I do yeah. see a lot of mountain bikers in them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but are some girls gravitating to gravel? And more not. roadies do. So roadies that yeah, I guess don't, so. That's me. I see roadies that don't like riding um, technical terrain will gear towards gravel because it's dirt. It's part dirt. It's part road. Um, it's uh, safer they, or they feel more confident because they're not doing anything super gnarly. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's just a different discipline. I mean, they're all fantastic. It's just, is that discipline for you? Um, mm -hmm. Or would you rather go ride some super fun, flowy, rocky single track? Yeah. So it really just depends on what you, what, what brings you the most joy. Yeah. Cause I got back into mountain biking this year. Oh, right. I on. Start, oh, I started mountain biking to 90. So 98, I got myself a hardtail. No. Yeah, hardtail. What was your first bike? Let me guess, a Rocky Mountain? No, it was a Norco Bigfoot. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought but everybody... it had no suspension. So, oh, and that cost rigid. $700. Ooh. I had to put payments on it. Remember, you could go to the store and put like put on layaway? Oh, like a layaway. Yeah, I remember layaways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first one. And then I got um, a Brody. It was my second bike. Which, which is a hard tail. And I rode that. I still have it. I still love it. Uh, people look, you know, I brought it out cause I don't have like a, you know, a new mountain bike. And I'm like, oh, I forget. I know it's the, the tires are skinnier and everything else, but it's still like the sh best shifters ever. Um, and, and so, but I got my kids into it so I could be like oh, a awesome. parent survivor, uh -huh. like sur not survivor, a uh, supervisor. And so I'm like, okay, well, this is a good way to ease me back into it. Yeah. I'm following like these 10 year olds that are like so fast. Yeah. And I'm just like, whoa. Um, and uh, so, 
so yeah. And then I, and then I found a woman's uh, mountain bike group, much like yours. And two of my girlfriends were leaders in there and we used to race back in the day. And so it was good to then ride with females yeah. over kids, <laughs> you know, adults. Oh, and for I'm sure. Like, yeah. And then I could, I could just feel, you know, all the, those emotions, like those mountain bike emotions flowing back into me. Yeah. Like, the, uh, the empowerment after I've been riding for about 15 years yeah. and still after every single ride, I still feel like I can conquer anything. The empowerment it gives mm -hmm. me and the, the amount of calmness mm -hmm. is, yeah is crazy and i'm an extremely intense person and mm -hmm. for me to make to have anything to make me calm is uh, very difficult and and i found it in this sport and yeah. um and yeah it's and i i firmly believe everybody else feels the same way i mean you see it in their faces and i smile so much when i when i'm I ride when I'm done. My cheeks, my face is exhausted. <laughs> I think your pictures from, you have, yeah, from smiling. smiles all the time. Yeah, just exhausted. Yeah, because I, I did scare myself a couple times because I I let myself go I'm like super fast. I'm like following the leader, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, we've all Sylvia, done that. I think you better like calm down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, wait till you ride an e-bike. Uh, have you ridden an e-bike yet? No. So super, very different experience. Uh, super fast up and down and just a very different experience if you've never you know I've never ridden anything like with a throttle or a motor or pedal assist by myself so I never experienced anything with that with that power and being able to get up uh, over like really technical stuff and just oh. all you got to do is hold on and keep pedaling and it's like <laughs> wow this was fantastic so it's a lot of fun, very different experience. And e-bikes are, are welcome on our rides as well, but they still have to um, uh, follow the same etiquette as everyone else. So they, oh, they yeah. can't, you can't be a tool on an e-bike. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have heard of people gra like going to e like mountain bike e-bikes. I'm like, what? well, what happens is it, what's happened um we call them covid riders so when yeah <laughs> oh, COVID they started riders, in covid yes. so they started in covid they've never been and it doesn't matter if they're on an e-bike or a regular bike it has nothing to do what bike they're on they've never been on a group ride the bike shops they don't educate people on any kind of etiquette out there so they don't know <laughs> when well, how you don't know if you see a sign with a big cross through the bike how do you not know don't go on that trail I don't know, but, um, you know, they don't know, you know, Hey, if you're going to pass somebody, do it safely and make sure you say something, Hey, coming up on your left, you know, instead of yeah. passing you with an inch and, you know, that those are the COVID riders and it, but they're the same riders also that, um, get in a car and they're already angry. So <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what they're on. Yeah. doesn't matter what they're on. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. COVID fires. That's funny. And like cycling just exploded down there, I'm sure. The same as yeah. it exploded up here. It's like, oh my God, where did all these people come from? Yeah. And I know there's road e bikes too, and there's gravel e bikes. Um, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I know. And they're expensive. Very, <laughs> very expensive. Yeah. I know. We were in the bike shop, and me and the kids, because we're, buying a, a mountain bike for the kids and we're like hey look at this bike and this and the bill was still on it like this had been purchased it was like fifteen thousand dollars yeah I'm yeah just like yeah yeah the top line are um about 15 grand you can get like a like a 250 motor um for a couple of grand um i have a, a live e-bike um, I think that was about seven. And then I have a couple of friends that have the specialized um, e-bikes, uh, the 700s, mine's a 650, they have a 700. Those were um, around 10. And then they have like the S-Works that are around 15 grand. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. S-Works yeah. as an e-bike. Yeah. Wow. Holy crap. Wow. All right. 
Well, I am not going to e-bike route, but I was actually thinking about renting one if I had. Oh, for, you should like, definitely try it. Well, no, but but this was more for coaching. Oh As yeah, cyclists because I coach, so like I do one on ones, and I'm like, I know I'm gonna hit that person that's way stronger than me. That you know, I have to follow them and and coach behind them. I'm like, <gasps> so I'm yeah. like. Maybe one of these e-bikes might be a great idea for well, stuff like it's, that. It's helpful on the group rides because you can float. So on the group rides, I take I'm I'm the one that takes all the pictures. So I'll go between <sighs> all the rides and all the routes, and I gotta even on the uh, even on an e-bike, I gotta hustle it because it's just pedal assist too. So right. um, you still gotta p pedal a lot. And uh, so, yeah, it's very helpful because I can catch up and go back and forth if somebody needs help. Um, I can get ahead again to get pictures. Um, so it's a mm -hmm. really, I also have a tow rope in case somebody's hurt um, to tow them. Oh. So yeah, it's a, it's a really no useful way. Yo, way. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, a, we it, use them for adventure racing. Oh yeah. Oh, towing really? Somebody. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. To keep it's everybody very, together. Yeah, it's a very mm -hmm. useful tool to have. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Well, this has been amazing. I can't think of anything. Like, I'm sure we could just sit there and chat. But um, for our listeners, like you said, if you're in the United States and you're looking for a place, look up Wendy. We're going to have all her contact information in the description. So you can easily go to their Facebook group and check them out. And if you're ambitious enough to uh go and start your own chapter this is the lady to uh contact so thank you so much wendy and i oh, hope thanks our for listeners, having us. oh this is great and I'm, I, worth the wait thank you very much oh yeah thanks for, for accommodating my crazy schedule yeah <laughs> i'm like whoa okay <laughs> yeah 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 they got me over they got me going all over the country so it's kind of crazy Wow. So I, I do. And I'm certainly grateful you're, we were able to get this together tonight. And uh, I know you might have seen me a little bit yawning there because it's, it's late there. there. But yeah, and I just finished a workout. So oh. like, but it's perfect because it kept me up. <laughs> and I awesome. was like, so I appreciate you so, so much and have yourself an amazing day and everybody listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, Wendy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Well, there you have it, friends. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Wendy. It took me a long time to schedule that woman because of how busy she is with her business, uh, her, with her job and um, her mountain biking group. And I'm really, really grateful that she was able to come on and share um, Girls Gone Riding uh, mountain bike group. So I hope you found it really interesting. And like you said, if you're looking for a place, she's the person to check out. And if you're looking, if you're in uh, Quebec, thank you so much for spending this time with me on the Secrets from the Saddle podcast. Learning more about sighting people, places, and things that make cycling such an exciting sport. I am so yeah. glad so you stopped by today. Please leave me a review if you feel so moved so to do so. I would love have to hear your feedback. And, and if you could take one so second Everybody to share this episode with someone you think would enjoy it, I would be forever grateful. Also, if you could please leave me a review if you feel so moved by going to iTunes and leaving me an honest thought and an honest comment telling me what you think, and most importantly, tell me what you'd like to hear more of. It would really help me to bring more great, inspiring cycling stories to you. Until then, have an amazing day. Make sure you ride your bike. And don't forget to visit my YouTube channel if you'd like to see the full version of this podcast live.